picks up a first down. And, and I'm going to go back to, you know, we talked to our friends, uh, Charles Bishop and Neely. They follow Jackson State football and having dinner with them. I mean, they said this team feels like nobody can score three times on them. Three times. He didn't say if it was three field goals, three touchdowns. Prairie View has scored twice. Touchdown, field goal. That's how good this defense is. And, whoa. They are as good as advertised. Fourth best in all of FCS. Giving it got to get to the point where whoever we're doing the broadcast that week of the game, they're going to sit down with y'all because y'all know us better than everybody. Sure. And y'all know some of the inside stuff we do. that I may not tell them because I don't trust them. But sure. Trust us. Okay. Trust y'all. appreciate that. We trust. appreciate that, Coach. Much love, baby. <laughs>
Charles are out on assignment. How do we have both guys out on assignment? But we have none other than the adjunct professor, the visiting professor. Professor Drew is in the house, so we're going to make it work and make sure you get your weekly dose of Inside HBC Sports Lab. How you doing, Drew? I mean, I'm doing fine, you know, Doc. I, I love these opportunities as I get ready to uh, – you know, become an adjunct professor at a university. So it just, just gives me another opportunity to speak to people and try to educate people as uh, uh, I think I might have told you once upon a time, I'm now an adjunct professor at a Southeast, Southeastern University, the Southeastern Fire down in Lakeland, Florida. So I'll be teaching a couple online classes. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Yeah, we're going to make sure you prep your skills and make sure you're that much more ready uh, if you already are. And so we'll get into uh, all the old and new. And so we're going to bring it like we used to. We'll get a chance now to sneak a little more into the Division II side, any side, because A.D. Drew and our man Stephen Gaither are pretty much experts in that place. But we're going to let Professor Drew do what he does in such a way that we can make sure you get that. We'll certainly give you the ups and downs of the Division I. And we might even give Drew a chance to give his midterm grades, because in the SWAC, we're at midterm and all teams have played or have forfeited the requisite nine games, which means you're halfway through the 18 game schedule in the SWAC. And all but one team in the MEAC has played their half, their schedule, all seven of their 14 total games, which is Norfolk. And boy, we have a major upset. For some people, in some minds, they were on the road to Norfolk. State was on the road to North Carolina Central. In the barn over there, no ordinary bird, as they say, around those parts. The Eagles got it done. Coach Mouton found a way to do his little magic as he does. And he landed Norfolk State, their first uh, conference loss of the season after they were rolling for much of the season. Um, and so we had a chance maybe to tease out that a little bit. But with that being said, let me jump into it. This is what I want to start with. This is huge. This is significant. Right? And what? Before I do that, let me tease it out just a little bit. Aggies, we'll, we'll talk about that. But let me give some love to the listeners. Uh, but before we do that, you know, we always do our special welcome. Welcome to episode 234 of Inside HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast, the show that's covering the sporting HBC dash for all things HBC sports from institutions large and small. From the NAIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBC sports culture. HBCU Athletic Aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Khalil, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to Casey Waste 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Before I go into the big news that I want to talk about in terms of North Carolina A&T and the Aggies, Many people know this, but I, I just got to spend some time on this. But I want to say this. You know, we talk about the business of sports. I gave you an A plus, a 100. And, you know, anybody that knows anything about Dr. Cavill, Professor Cavill, the dean, whatever you want to call it, you know, A's do not distribute very well in my class. Now, there's folks that can do it. I mean, they chime in. But when I give you that A plus, that means you got the stamp of approval. Your framework. And the way that you broke down the discussion, just from a business perspective, no slants, you know, you teased in a little bit of stuff like that. You gave some ribbon uh, in good nods and, and framed the discussion in terms of what you heard on Carlos Brown. Shout out to him and this show Saturday, bringing you on there, balance the uh, information that they provided on there. And then on your own show with Brian and AD, have you spent – significant time really breaking down the news that came out last week in terms of the SWAC classic, as some people are calling it, in terms of Birmingham, uh, the three-year deal that can spin off to five total. First year is Arkansas, Pine Bluff, and Jackson State. The following two years, two and three, or Jackson State and Southern. The way that you broke down the business concept of that was A100. So for those that haven't had a chance, go to my ECSN. My JBN, you know, the Facebook site, preferably YouTube, go check out that on Saturday, Carlos Brown's show, 
and you can go into the segment there and hear A.D. Drew and how he broke it down. And then he goes in even a longer, greater dialogue, as he said he would on his regular Sunday show with Brian and A.D. So I wanted to give you a little kudos for that. That was significant, the way you broke that down. We've talked it off, so we won't get in that kind of detail. But I wanted to let folks, if they wanted to hear it, uh, in regards to the details of the business framework, not going one direction or the other, but something to seriously look at if you want to understand that kind of dialogue, I wanted you to get that. I wanted you to go there and understand it. With that being said. Appreciate um, that, Doc. Appreciate it. Oh, well deserved. Uh, yeah, happy to be able to acknowledge that. Let me give a shout out. Chad Cooper, Lonnie Shaw. Yeah, Lonnie. You should be smiling. The Maggies are doing it big. They're doing it big. Noah Price is in the house. Good evening, Dean and professors. Lab time. 24 hours till National Signing Day. You think that's going to be a big deal? Just a little bit. Yeah, it's Saturday. Karen Griffin, the SIEC, is in the house. Chad Cooper, good evening, professors. Ready for the lecture. Let's get it in. You know what we do. SU 2022 football schedule is out. Some people should be licking their chops. They're ready to get down there. Go ahead and reserve your hotel rooms because if you're in places like Florida A&M and Tallahassee, my understanding for homecoming, too late. <laughs> no, I tell you, no You're going to be staying like at Thomasville or Monticello. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? You yeah, I, and if you've never been down there, you have no idea how, what I'm talk, where I'm talking about. <laughs> right. You might as well be in Pensacola for all I know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Alex Hines is in the house. Mary Allen. Yes, yes, yes. Kay Johnson always getting G Boom. Holly, boy, he was doing some pictures. He got plenty of pictures. From that big matchup, and boy, on the men's side, did it live up to a classic in overtime. The men's and win uh, women's game was really nice as well. But boy, that men's game, man, you talking about theatrics. Shout out to Texas Southern University as they brought out the brooms. They did get the sweep. Rod Pasha, twin is in the house. What's up, twin? Willie Alex Hines, as we said, John Jenkins. When did Jenkins Bishop? Good to see you, ma'am. Thank you for the support. Willie Bolden. Who else is in the house? Edwin Dwight Moore, uh, Wendy said, don't get it too comfortable. Charles Bishop will be back. He, she said, make sure now. Well, watch Seth. Michael Ford is in the house. What else? All right, shout out there. I did want to get in there, and then I'll give you a chance to chime in and see what news that you want to share or maybe even give you your thoughts on this. North Carolina A&T historic number one track and field ranking for North Carolina A&T in terms of the outdoor Season and week number two, they are at number one. Look at some of the top five. Check this out. You have Kentucky at number five, Georgia at number five, Texas at number, excuse me, Georgia at number four, Texas at number three, Texas Tech at number two, number one, North Carolina A&T, HBCU, as you all know, been perennial in track, so they've been climbing up that ladder, and they have put their official stake down, and they want to be recognized. Um, and certainly we're going to make sure that they know this. The Aggies women are up five spots themselves. Shivery's not dead. They're ranked number 27 for a total program. That's pretty big time. Notice the first four that I mentioned, and they're all power five programs, as you call it. Two of them out of the SEC and then two of them out of the Big 12. But Texas going to the SEC in some point, sometime. We don't know what that is, but that's a whole discussion. <laughs> we'll leave that alone. But yeah, with that being yeah. said, did you want to share any thoughts in terms of A&T track program in terms of this most notable announcement? I, I'm not sure I heard you right, Doc. And, and, and I never, never want to correct a, a doctor or a dean. You said they were, the, they were number one in HBCU ranking? No, this is national. I'm glad you made sure that everybody understood. <laughs> okay. I, said, I, 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 one, I was just saying they are in an HBCU that happens to be number one. No, this is a national ranking. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody Kentucky, understood Georgia, Texas, Texas, Texas. The, 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 the significance of what you said, Dr. Kavir. They That's are right. number one in the nation. And you're, you're a much better historian than I am. I, I pride myself on knowing uh, a lot of the history, but has an HBCU ever been preseason number one in any sport, Doc? 
I I know not in my lifetime. I can't rec- I can't recall in my lifetime. I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but I cannot consciously recall it. In terms of Division One, you know, you may be able to go back to the NAIA days, Division Two days, or what they call the small football. In terms of that, you have some uh, rankings of that type of nature. Um, so you don't see it very often, but from the Division One. A certain clarification, you got to go back to Division One Howard men's soccer program when they won their champion, national championships in the 70s. Obviously, they were ranked number one after that um, part. You had Tennessee State that people forget about in 1999. This is Division One. Yes, it's FCS, but it's Division One. They were ranked number one in week number 11 and week number 12 to close out the season before the final ranking after the playoff. But going into the playoffs in 1999, Tennessee State Tigers football program, yeah, that's been a while. Last time they really won the OVC, 98-99, they were ranked number one in the country, week number 11 and week number 12. So those are two that just kind of jump out with me. But to your point, uh, you know, it is significant when you talk about the number one ranking, certainly in track and field, Obviously, we've had some number one rankings, national championships uh, over the years in terms of NAIA, uh, Division Two, and obviously uh, when you go back in terms of some of the historic programs. But to be clear, we can clean it all up and say this. This is the safety net I tell people to use when they don't have a thesaurus of HBCU notes. Say in modern history, you're safe. At least this century. <laughs> we can definitely say this century, Dr. Kabir. Uh, so, uh, but what, what, what do you expect when you have the whole four by four team that is returning with all Olympians, two of them for America, two of them for their respective countries, uh, I believe you had their team had another two Olympians and that's just on the male side, right? And when you get, and when you get into the female side. They had, and I'm just going off the top of my head, I know two Olympians on the female side and one person who would have qualified for the Olympics had it not been for uh, some missteps. We'll just say it like that. So, uh, yes, this is this is significant, but it's preseason, Doc. Let's keep keep the reality check in here. It is preseason. It is up to Aggie Pride, North Carolina a t to justify that ranking throughout this track season. They had a very good and successful indoor season, but we want to see them justify and maintain this number one ranking because all it takes is one misstep. I mean, we've seen what happened to Travis Hunter. You know, he was number one back in uh, October. Now he's number eight. So you know what happens when we get to the top. They just wait on one slip up and we'll be outside that top five real fast, Doc. So good luck to the Aggies. I hope the Aggies uh, and, and Raw Senior continues to do what he does and leading those young men and young women at that program. Yeah, and I do want to level set and clear out. This is the outdoor track. So this is week number two is what I've seen the ranking. So okay. coming in the preseason. So this is week number two in terms of their ranking. But we do need to separate to your point when you talk about all season. You have the indoor track season, which, which is this yes. early part. And then you have the outdoor track. So last year when they captured the world's imagination, when they did so well, uh, NCAA, especially the four by four team in terms of what they were able to do, that was the outdoor. Um, and they did well in indoor, but we really didn't get the height. So, again, now people are a little more focused, doing a better job job in terms of marketing and getting this information out but this is the second week in terms of that NCA ranking they do for outdoor track and so in week number two they have jumped up because of their performance this last weekend and over the last couple of weeks ranked number two so uh kudos to them in terms of what they were able to do there let's take a quick break and we'll be right back after this break and we'll get into a little more basketball and see what else is going on see what other things we can talk about and check it up this is Dr. Gaville inside the HBC Sports Lab Sitting in for Mike Washington and Charles Bishop is none other than Professor Drew, giving you some insights and updates from his perspective. Check him out on Sports Wrap on VCSN, as we say, on Sundays uh, afternoon. We'll be right back after this quick break. I have in me the 
Support the Black College Sports Network so we can continue to provide you coverage. Go to myjbn.com slash support and be a part of the Black College Sports Network. Tell everybody they can follow their dreams. It's NBA TV and baby, the swag is back. The Lady Rattlers and the Lady Tigers start the show. Then the champ is here. Last season, TSU's men captured the swag title. But fam, you anxiously await their arrival. Coverage begins Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. Pick something we all like. Okay, hold on. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? Buick Envision 2021. Oh, you should pick something stronger that's really predictable. That's a really tight spot. Don't worry. I used to hate parallel parking. Me, Me too. too. Hey. You really outdid yourself. Yes, we did. The all-new Buick Envision. An SUV built around you. All of you. Let's get back to getting ticks instead of watching flicks. Before we can safely get out there, we need the facts on COVID-19 vaccines. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision for yourself and for your crew. Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working. <laughs> never not working. Never ever not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield, never not working. <laughs> Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab, back with Professor Drew. Let's get into it. I did want to give one update I thought was pretty cool. SIC, I mean, we put out the information when it was first announced, but it's actually real now. The SIEC inaugural men's volleyball season is underway. Uh, some SIEC teams will be featured uh, at the Southwest Boys Classic and the Lone Star Classic uh, 18s on February 4th and 5th, 2022, as you know. Austin, Texas, the non-conference tournaments will be first time that an NCAA Division I, Division II regular season matchup for the SIET. See SIAC schools. The two day event will feature five matchups highlighting the SIAC member institutions Kentucky State taking on Hawaii, Stanford, and Queens. To give you a couple of more of them, a lot going on. Awesome to see men's volleyball in terms of SIAC, especially when you talk about the national, international perspective of a lot of players. That's pretty cool in the pub that they're getting from. I'll be interested to kind of see how that flows around. But who will come out this inaugural season as the champion? It's always nice to put your flag down. But that first one, no one can ever take it. There's them. only one that's there's going to be one. the first. That's right. That's you only right. had one first one. <laughs> so let's let's get in here and go to the SIC basketball. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the women's. Uh, and let me know your thoughts, what's on your mind in terms of what's going on there with the SIC. What are some of the big matchups? Any surprises going into this week as the season is season is chugging along? You start to see and uh, separating, you know, the pretenders, if you would, uh, from uh, those that are really in position to make a statement. What are your thoughts going on in terms of the SIC basketball? You can touch on a little bit of the men's and women's side, Drew. Yeah, on, on, on the women's side, uh, Chivalry is not there. We will start with the women. There are three teams that have separated themselves from, from everyone else in the SIAC. Tuskegee, Benedict, two names on the women's side that you that you expect to hear. Tuskegee is two and a half games clear of miles on the west side. But Benedict is in second place, Dr. Cavill. Something <laughs> you do not expect to hear. Benedict being in second place because of, of a surprising Savannah State Savannah team. State. Yes, mm -hmm. Savannah State started off 9-0 and in conference before they finally uh, dropped one, ironically, to Benedict. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Tuskegee is 9-1. and one. Guess who that one is to? Miles? Benedict. Benedict. Ah. 
So it's really interesting on the women's side, it, despite Benedict being in second place, they have been. They got the biggest, best two wins thus far on the season. Exactly, exactly. Now, for Savannah State, this month, we're going to see how good Savannah State is. On the 14th, Valentine's Day, don't think there's going to be any love in Tiger Arena when you have the Battle of the Tigers when Savannah State and Benedict play in the return match. Then, that Saturday, Tuskegee. Savannah State travels to Tuskegee. You get one at home, you get one Tiger on the road. We're going to see which Tiger is supreme. Is it the regular Tigers or the Golden Tigers? Is it the Tigers in blue and orange or is it the Tigers in purple and gold? So that women's race is going to be, and, and, and let's keep this one thing in mind. Someone, if the seed plays out, will have to play the other one in the semifinals in the SIAC tournament. Going to be real fun on, on the women's side. On the men's side, oh, were you going to chime in there, Doc? No, I, I think you dropped it down. I, I'm really excited about that. Savannah State, Benedict, the way you broke down between those, uh, although they have two conference losses and sit behind Savannah State, obviously a game back. The fact that they had those two big wins is interesting to see in the final part of the season, can they get somebody else uh, to do that dirty work in terms of Savannah State or will they get a chance to, you know, get a little um, statement in terms of the follow-up loss <laughs> well, on so, that road. But yeah, yeah, that's where it all goes down. But it's really going to get in terms of the tournament time. Exactly. Who is going to make that final four in terms of those seasons? And in this case, you probably will have some good semifinal matchups in terms of between these three teams. Yeah, because don't, don't – don't, Miles – Unfortunately, Miles has not beaten one of those top three teams this year. Uh, Miles sitting at 74, Lane. But Lane does have one of those uh, – put one of those two L's on Benedict. And they're mm-hmm. sitting in third place in the SIAC. Flip it over to the men's side. Uh, Miles, to use a uh, academic phrase, Miles is setting the curve in the SIAC on the west side. Mm-hmm. They are t- uh, two to three games clear of second place Tuskegee. So Miles is setting the curve uh, on the west side. But in the east side, looks like, it, it, once again, you've got two teams on the east side. Benedict, name sounds familiar. Yeah, they're good on both sides, men and women. And a surprising Morehouse. You know, people wonder how Morehouse was going to respond in their first year without their legendary coach, Grady Brewer. Well, after, after a little bit of a slow start, <laughs> It, it it's just same thing insert coach play ball that's what it looks like is going on at the house as they like to call it so that they there you have my siac report dr Cavill. let's jump right over um as we close out this segment ciaa give them a little bit of love any team that you want to keep your eyes on over there in terms of ciaa men's and women's uh number one both the lincolns uh when i say both lincolns on the men and the women's side uh nice. Uh, Lincoln uh, has very good teams going on. They're uh, fourteen and seven overall on the uh, on the men's side. The when women. was the last time you seen Lincoln's men's and women doing the double dip? Now uh, Lincoln's and, women and, were good last year, but right, right. But I'm yeah. saying both. Um, so it doesn't surprise that the women are back. They've kind of solidified, much like Benedict out of the SIC. Expectations they're going to be there until you maybe see a change of the coaching and something in a framework, but. Uh, to have teams that are good on both sides, Benedict, men's and women's, Lincoln's men's and women's, it's pretty nice uh, when you can set the table like. Yeah. Uh, Virginia Union ran to a little bump in the road. You know, if you looked at the CIAA schedule last week, a lot of teams played three and sometimes even four games, including back-to-backs on Sunday and Monday uh, to catch up on games because of uh, COVID rescheduling. So, uh, Virginia Always Union – Virginia Union hit a little bump in the road going one and two last week on the men's side. So uh, kind of came back to the pack a little bit because Virginia Union looked like they were going to run away with it. Uh, and one other thing before we get off this segment, shout out to Talladega, number two in the nation. Not, not in the conference, Dr. Cavill. Number two in NAIA. You know, we talk about uh, A&T on that track thing. Let's talk about Talladega. 
and, and on the, on the basketball side, and and they women aren't half bad either. You know, the women are number number two in the BCSN rankings, and they are receiving votes on the national rankings in uh, NAIA. But uh, one women's team, Russ College Bears, eighteen and two. Shout out to Eric Jackson. Eric, uh, Coach Eric Jackson will be on the BCSN Sports Wrap on this uh, Sunday. So we get to go a little bit in, inside their program there at Russ College. Nice plug. Nice plug. Before we go to the break, I did want to shout out men, Paul Quinn College, the Tigers, not eligible for the tournament, obviously literally rebuilt that program uh, when, the, when it looked like the school might even be closing. Not only have they revamped, uh, the gymnasium, they got that tremendous floor, Ooh. but they got a basketball program. Both men's and women's are doing well. We saw what the women did last year, but now the men are chasing history and looking really good over in the Red River Athletic Conference doing their thing. Unfortunately, they won't be uh, eligible for the NIA tournament, but if this is any statement in terms of how they're building that program, and if you know anything about the Dallas area, yeah, it's some bad basketball being played in that area, both on the men's and women's side. You hear all the time about the national McDonald's All-Americans, Jordan All-Americans, if you would, uh, in regards to that Under Armour All-Americans. But the talent level in Dallas is so deep, uh, you certainly could see why Paul Quinn can get in that marketplace. And fans really like their basketball up in Dallas, you know. Uh, so that's unique. So I did want to sneak in and do a little shout out to Paul Quinn. Right. Last thing about Paul Quinn, last HBCU to suffer a loss this year. Mm. Starting off 15 and 0 before they suffered their first loss. And all they were levels. Balling. Hey, we're balling. Let's get into this break. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. They're out on assignment. So none other than the visiting professor Drew was in the house. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about the Division I side of things and get you caught up with what's going on. Grades are out. When do we want the grades? Stick around. We'll give you some grades and analysis of what you can expect as we move forward. This is Dr. Phil inside HBC Sports Lab. We'll be right back after this break. Your ad could be ran here. MyJBN.com backslash support myjbn.com backslash support for more information from novice to aficionado find yourself here high quality cigars plus personal customer service slow burn is waco's only Mobile Cigar Lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Itchy, squirmy, scratchy, family not getting clean. Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? It's NBA TV, and baby, the swag is back. Florida and m Rattlers, Texas Southern Tigers, where you at? First, the ladies of the Rattlers and Tigers start the show. Then, the champ is here. Last season, TSU's men captured the SWAC title. The fam use fierce on the floor and anxiously await their arrival. This HBCU showcase will be electric. Don't miss it. TSU, fam you, pull up, tap in. Coverage begins Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV. <laughs> It's like a loot machine. All around town, people trying to get down. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love ya. And who the ball? Who the ball? So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. 
This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Second half, we're in the third quarter. Let's get into it. Let's go into some big South OVC play, starting with the women. Last Thursday, as we got off the show, you saw the A&T Aggies get it done against Radford, defeating them really and giving them the business 88 to 47. Uh, and then on Saturday, you had A&T with their back-to-back -back wins, if you would, in terms of that weekend series over Gardner Webb, a close one in that one, but they got it done, 90 to 88, putting up a lot of points. The Hampton games were suspended this Saturday, uh, which brings us to Monday when you had a &T defeating Campbell, 76 to 61. So they're getting it done there. Uh, because of that cancellation, you have Hampton and Gardner Webb playing now. That game is currently tied 11-11 just nearly at the end of the first quarter. So what does that mean in terms of the standings for the women? Uh, you see a &T sitting at six and three in the conference race. That is nine and 10 overall. Uh, they have won six straight playing really good after, you know, a slow start. They have come out guns a blazing. They literally went down 0 and three and they've won six straight uh, to get to six and three. You have Hampton Power sitting at three and two. Hampton bounced back uh, with that win. Uh, they started off with two big wins, had two losses. Now they picked another one, said so just a third, three and two. See with the cancellations that they're not at the same amount of games as many other teams in the conference. A&T &T, uh, sits in the fourth position uh, with a couple of teams ahead of them at eight and two, as well as South Carolina Upstate ahead of them at five and two. So uh, game back, if you would, uh, game and a half, as they like to say, in terms of the uneven record of games played, but that gives you a little update. Any thoughts in terms of the women, in terms of the big style? Uh, well, I think it's going to be interesting to see what Hamptons women do this weekend. They've got North Carolina, uh, South Carolina upstate Thursday away, and then they turn around and play them at home on Saturday. So, you know, when you play two teams, when you play the same team, consecutive you know yeah, it's cool. always interesting to see how that goes it's, but right. when you playing a away home home away it really doesn't matter with only one day to uh to prepare to make to make your adjustments really go see how that how that goes does have to get the split does have to get the sweep or does have to get swept you know that's that's something i want to take uh keep keep an eye on and then you know they back at it again on tuesday they go uh they go to presbyterian so that not being able to get that rhythm because most of these colleges they're used to two at home two away and you know being at home for a couple of three games being away for a couple of three games just back to back back home away home away let's see how hampton responds to that great point getting into the OBC with tennessee state siu defeat to Tennessee State last Thursday, 79 to 62. But on Saturday, Tennessee State also lost in overtime, 78 to 70. A little bit of a slide there for Tennessee State uh, as they were uh, praying pretty well and get it done. They did have to make up a game. And then on Monday, uh, they got ahead of it, 77 to 60, in terms of what's looking out that. So we'll see them in terms of what they did coming up this Thursday. Uh, what, what does that mean in terms of the standing? Tennessee State sits at six and four. Uh, they've won uh, one game after they bounced back after a couple of losses. So that puts them uh, five, at the sixth spot in terms of where they're trying to finish. Uh, but they're only two games back when you think about the overall standing. So it'll be fascinating to see what that looks like. Let's move over in terms of look at the men and both the Big South and the OVC to see what's going on there. Uh, OVC. Tennessee State is struggling, but so is uh, Hampton. But for dexterity service, let's get back into it in terms of what took place this past weekend. You did have uh, A&T losing to South Carolina Upstate 84-64. You had Hampton getting a win against Charleston Southern 78-74 to uh, in terms of what's going on there. So it'll be interesting. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, tomorrow, you will have Hampton back in play as they will take on the South Carolina Upstate team that beat North Carolina a &T. So that's one to keep your uh, eyes on. In terms of the standing, North Carolina a &T after starting, uh, you know, solid, they're down to four and four. They're just at 500, nine and 13 overall. So they hit the skid in terms of losing three straight. Be interesting to see if they can kind of bounce back and get things going. They're three and a half back of Longwood, the Lancers, 
uh, undefeated, seven and zero, and then you have Hampton that's two and five, uh, also um, getting a little bit of that action. Same thing as you see with the OVC, uh, Tennessee State struggling there in terms of starting off okay, but lately they just haven't been able to get it done in terms of what that looks like. So on Thursday they did get a win over Southern Illinois in terms of uh, Evansville. That's seventy-five to seventy in that game. On Saturday, though, they lost a close one to Eastern Illinois, 62 to 57. That was on the road for Tennessee State. So, you know, it's always tougher to get in the road. So, but you want to find a way to get it done because that puts them in terms of the overall standing. They sit at four and six, uh, nine and 13 overall, five spots back in terms of the races and Moorhead that are really playing some good basketball in the OVC. Men's side, any comments you want to go in terms of what you see on the men's side? I uh, want to jump back on the women's side for one thing, uh, Tennessee State. Tennessee State women, 4-1 and one at home. Mm-hmm. So that's keeping them in the race right now. Uh, but you got to you, you – gotta, you, your ideal thing, protect your home court, 500 on the road. So Tennessee State women are doing it, what you really want to do on uh, college basketball. You go, you know you're going to give up one, maybe two at home, but you want to win. You want to get about 85% clip at, at the house and go 500 on the road. That's going to put you in good standings in most conferences. Uh, uh, flip it over to, to the men's side. I mean, in the OVC, come on now. We know Murray State is a, has always been the class of the OVC for the last <laughs> how many other years. I mean, is it is that what this kid named Ja Morant uh, played ball at? You know, Yeah, Mo- that's what I hear. And Moorhead State has, when, when it hadn't been Murray State, it's been Moorhead State. So Tennessee State up here battle in well, Belmont that, is always tough in there too. You're right. Yeah, yeah. You know, that 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 conference when it comes to mid-major basketball has always had some contenders, and which is why you don't hear the name Tennessee State come out of that conference too often when it comes to round ball. Uh but so what's it, tough about that is those stronger teams in terms of Murray State and Belmont are leaving the conference. So Obviously, we heard about the football powers in terms of Eastern Kentucky, Jacksonville State. Obviously, now they were going to A-Sun, but now they're going to reclassify and go to the FBS. Um, you, but Austin P. Uh, that recently had some success. All those teams are leaving the conference in some framework. So it really is intriguing to see what that looks like because now the OVC will be down to five football teams, which means uh, they're at uh, – automatic at large bid which is what a lot of teams look forward to uh in terms of being able to get into the fcs playoffs will not be there so we'll keep our eyes on that let's take this last break and we'll come back into some meag swack talk men's and women's uh and give you a couple of shout outs on your way out the door remember signing day is tomorrow so to be interesting keep your buzz in terms of who's hot who's not we're going to get any more flips obviously that huge news about grambling is out there in terms of them being able to potentially land this NIL deal that will not only um, have a player or two from Grambling getting <clears throat> financial benefits in terms of the name, image, and likeness, but this will go across the board for all athletes at Grambling. That's huge news. So be fascinating to see what that means as we get a little closer to see that going forward. For my sources, it's legitimate. It's coming, uh, but they're just working out some details. Let's get into this break. We'll be right back with our last fourth four. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you guys, you guys do for us. You see, Head & Shoulders has scalp shield technology, protects against flakes, even between washes. It's never not working. Kind of like us. Number 15? Never not working. I don't like this one. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Head & Shoulders scalp shield, never not working. It's NBA TV and baby, the swag is back. The Lady Rattlers and the Lady Tigers start the show. Then the champ is here. Last season, TSU's men captured the swag title. The family anxiously await their arrival. Coverage begins Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV.
press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Cavill inside the HBC Sports Lab. <clears throat> We're into the fourth quarter with Professor Drew, a visiting professor get it done. Karen Griffin said, what's up with Langston Lions women basketball? How they doing lately? They're sitting at 15 and 7, 10 and 6. They started off pretty hot, but they slid a little bit, but they're still in the mix in terms of where they are. Uh, they're trailing a couple of teams at the top of the conference uh, behind them. So they're, they're sitting currently at the fifth spot, if you would, in terms of what it looks like about four games back in terms of that schedule. So got a little hill to climb, still got a little time to do it, but that's the update in terms of Langston women's, just to give you a little bit of update there. Going back, as we said, we're going to bring you into the MEAC and the SWAC, starting with the women again. Uh, Spartans, both of state Spartans, just like the men are playing really good basketball. Haven't played many games though. COVID has kind of did them in, but that's many of the teams on the women's side. Uh, eight and seven overall, but they're sitting at four and you know, in the conference race, sitting behind them is Howard Bison. They seem to always be in there. Obviously, they won the champ tournament championship last year. They're sitting at four and one uh, in terms of what's going on there. So it'll be interesting when you talk about some of those matchups uh, of what is taking place. Obviously, they do that Saturday, Monday. And, and you talk a little bit about that. It's interesting how it seems like some of the biggest matchups and certainly some of the rivalry games have been on Monday versus Saturday. Uh, it's just kind of the way the schedule works out, uh, intriguing some how that is. And then in the SWAT, what's also unique, you know, we tend to think about the states with two teams. They have those rivalries, and you do have that in the SWAT with Grambling, Southern. But because of that centroid position of some of those teams in the middle, you know, that rivalry between Grambling, Alcorn, Jackson, and Southern, you know, is just as big as some of the state rivalries in terms of how it goes down. So it's hard to actually get every rivalry on Saturday. But I am glad that they pulled um, the Texas rivalry between Texas Southern and Prairie View uh, from starting on a Saturday, January, before students get back, as it was this last weekend. And, and we might get into a little yeah. bit of the ESPN games because there's some big games coming up. ESPNU, that was what you saw on Saturday. We got more coming. And you have NBA TV. With that, you have – have um, a schedule coming up February 5th, Texas Southern and FAMU, men's and women's basketball. That's a doubleheader, which will air on NBA TV. I'll actually be in Tallahassee for that game, so I'll get to put my eyes on FAMU. That a big uh, win as they held Alabama State, as Alabama State came back uh, to take the lead, and then they had a big clutch basket to do it. Oh, man, that was an exciting <laughs> game to watch there. Kudos to FAMU as they're playing some good basketball. Tied. For first place with a couple of teams, we'll get it on that in terms of the men's side. February 7th, you have Alabama A&M will travel to face Grambling State on ESPNU. February 12th, you have Texas Southern will host Grambling for the men's and women's basketball. That will be on NBA TV. That will be right here in Houston, Texas. Southern will be uh, hosting that game. I'll be here live. That'll be a big one. And then as we close out February, you got February 21st, Alabama State will square off against Bethune Cookman on ESPNU. Big game as Bethune Cookman gets to host that. February 28th, Jackson State, Prairie and will close out the regular season portion of the national televised games for the league in the following week, which is also on ESPNU. So a couple of different ways you can see these games uh, in terms of the national uh, limelight, ESPNU, as well as NBA TV, big time. Let's get into back to the MEAC a little bit, give you some of these scores. Obviously, told you about Norfolk State getting it done, defeating South Carolina State this past Saturday by 20. Yet how we're taking down Central by 15, six, well, really about 11, excuse me, 6, 6, 55. You had Cotton State at home taking down Maryland, at least in scoring that, uh, Maryland rivalry, 86 to 57. Delaware State and Morgan State was postponed. You had your flip on Monday where you had Morgan State and Maryland Eastern Shore. Morgan State got it done 72 to 60. Howard over South Carolina State, 60 to 59 in terms of those matchups. Let me take you to the women's side of the SWAC before – uh, we look at that a little bit. Uh, big matchups this Saturday uh, in terms of what was going on when you hit that uh, halfway mark. Alabama State over Bethune Cookman, 81 to 64. Southern over Alcorn State, 65 to 40. Southern continues to roll, but they had that matchup with Jackson State on Monday. Uh, Pine Bluff over Valley, 75 to 63. 
Uh, Alabama A&M, 68 to 57. Texas Southern got it done against their rival, 91 to 77. Close throughout the game, but Texas Southern hit some free throws, stretched it out, and really won big going down the stretch. Uh, Jackson State at home over Grambling, 81 to 68. You turn around Monday, you had some other games where you had Jackson State continues to roll as they get it done over Southern, 66 to Alabama A&M over Bethune Cookman, 58 to 38. Alabama State over FAMU, 73 to 57. And Alcorn loses to Grambling at home, 65 to 41. In terms of the standings, when you look at it, Jackson State at the halfway mark, 9 and 0, getting it done. Behind them is Southern, 72. Then you get to a pair of six and three teams, which is Alabama schools, Alabama State and Alabama AM and m City, six and three on the women's side. Uh, three teams are tied at five and four. Arkansas Pine Bluff, Gremlin, Lady Tigers, and the Texas Southern Tigers all at five and four. We'll stop it there. Any grades that you want to give some of the top teams? Uh, what do you say in terms of the midway part, in terms of your disappointments or those that are setting the curve? What do you say? Let's start with the women, uh, SWAC women specifically. You know, I give Southern an A for this season. Any other time, great season. But you got this doggone team in the middle of Mississippi who is not only set the curve, they bust the curve out. And, you know, you've been in education a lot longer than I have, Dr. Cavill. You know how sometimes you've got that one student, you just have to take out the curve. Right, and then set the curve for everybody else. That's Jackson State right now. You right. just got to lead them, uh, get them yes, some independent is. study, get them probably look. You, I know you. This is required class for you, but you are too smart for this class. You know, you're doing 400 level work in a 200 level class. That's Jackson State right now, and um, wow, now, and, and Doc, there's only two things that's going to slow Jackson State down right now: injury and COVID. Right. Outside of that, I don't see anything. The question right now is, can Jackson State go and oh? That's the mm-hmm. only question that I have right now. Or will they have that slip up, especially, you know, those Saturday, Monday road trips, the Monday, the Monday away game is always the one where teams tend to slip up at. So can Jackson State get through that this season and go and oh? And they uh, got a little thing working for them when you talk about that, uh, Drew, is the fact that uh, because of the unbalanced schedule, Jackson State does not go back to Southern, which was probably the one of the biggest teams if you thought maybe could put uh, an L on the column would be Southern the way they're playing right now. But they don't that's, have to worry about going to Baton Rouge, which is yeah. always a tough place when you talk about the bluff. So yeah. that's going to be interesting to see, does that work in their favor? But your point is right on. Is there anybody else that's going to be able to hang that L on Jackson State? They do have the guard that's out, and so you can see in terms of them beating teams by 20-plus, it's kind of shrunk some, but they're still able to get the W, so keep your eyes in terms of what that looks like. I love that. Speaking of, and, I, and I'll move on after this, you know, they had their first game in conference that they lost, that they won by less than 20 points this weekend when they only won by 13. So that shows you the dominance of this Jackson State team. Look at moving over to the BAC, uh, sticking with the women right now. You know, and if you look at that that DC, that DMV area, and look at how competitive those teams are. I mean, you've got Norfolk, Howard, Coppin, and Morgan State. You know, those four teams playing each other. You remember last year where they went half and half, and all those teams kept beating up on each other. So, you know, it, it, it's still the same thing, except they get to play the Southern half to kind of help their records out. But I don't think there's uh, any way that Norfolk's 4-0 right now. I can't see them going and oh, especially with those uh, teams that are their neighbors up there in the northern part of the uh, MEAC conference on the women's side. Yeah, great point. Let's get into it on the men's side a little bit. Uh, Norfolk State defeated South Carolina State 87-69 this past Saturday. How was 75? Five to 74 over Central. That was an overtime game where Howard was able to slide over and get it done against the Eagles. Mid uh, Maryland Eastern Shore defeats Coppin State 64 to 61. Coppin State has slid a little bit. Um, the Delaware State Morgan State game was postone, postponed. Uh, so you did have a Sunday game where they were able to play it where Morgan State got it done against Delaware State 82 to 70. You go into Monday for the natural flip. You have Howard losing to South Carolina State. Uh, as South Carolina State hosted the game 58-55, doing there. 
Maryland Eastern Shore defeats Morgan State 79 to 72. Uh, but you have the classic game that was on ESPN. You watched this last night. It was beautiful as Central storms back uh, and gets it done against Norfolk State 70 to 67. Uh, very intriguing matchup when you talk, talk about that. Uh, landing Norfolk State, the first loss of the season. So they end the first half of the season at six and one. You have North Carolina Central trailing them three and one, a game and a half back because of the number of games played. But even in the loss column, Coppin State is three and two. South Carolina State sitting at three and three. Howard is two and three. Maryland beats the short two and three. Uh, those teams that are falling back. And then obviously they have Morgan State and Delaware State. Fascinating to terms what's going on there. I'm not sure how many of those games will be made up because after a while it just gets troubling to try to make up so many games when you're that far. But it'll be interesting to see if they'll try to get some of them done. Let's get into the SWAT before I ask you your grades uh, on that side of things at the midway point. In terms of the SWAC, obviously, you had your Saturday and Sunday tilt. Um, Alcorn over Southern, 68-64. Big win by Alcorn at that time. Um, you had Southern that was playing really good basketball, holding up everything with the one loss. They dropped them to two losses. Uh, but Alcorn stayed struggling on Monday, and we'll talk about that when we get the money scores. Uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff comes back and defeats Mississippi Valley at home, 74-68. Um, Gramlin over Jackson State, 73 to 64. Gramlin is quietly getting it done. Uh, Florida AM, 65 to 60. Final against Alabama AM. Fam, you, the Rattlers know how to win those close games. Texas Southern over Prairie View. That was an overtime game on ESPNU, 75 to 64. Oh, man, exciting game there. Alabama AM gets it done against Bethune Cookman, 79 to 63. I mean, 73. And on Monday, you had to flip the Alabama AM. Defeats Bethune Cookman 67 and 52. Southern and Jackson State. Close ball game, but Southern Jackson State couldn't had all the highlights, but couldn't get it done on the scoreboard winning. Uh, Southern gets it done 75 to 64. Grambling surprises all corn state to some degree, especially being it on the road, 80 to 73. But Grambling just seems to have all corn state's number in basketball. Florida AM gets a classic win in terms of one point win over Alabama State 66 to 65. Let's check out the standings in terms of the first half of the season. Bam, you sits at seven and two. Southern Jaguars sit at seven and two. Grambling State Tigers sit at seven and two. And then you have a pair of teams at six and three. That's Alcorn State Braves and Texas Southern. Uh, and then you get into a couple of uh, teams that are sitting at four and five. Surprising some of you all, the Prairie View A&M, four and five. Remember, they had those two early forfeits on the road, seeing how much that will play in. Uh, but you also have Alabama State, Alabama A&M. Uh, that, that that sit at four and five, and you have a couple of teams uh, sitting way back at three and six, uh, two and seven, one and eight, respectively, bringing your teams. What are your thoughts in terms of the MEAC SWAC in terms of some grades? Uh, if, if you're a Jackson State Tiger fan, thank God Mississippi Valley is in the conference, or else you would be in last place, which would be a which is a shocker to everyone who's followed me, uh, men's basketball. That Jackson State, right? Remember, this is, is the number team eleven. Last year that were uh, co-champions with Prairie View, undefeated, and then went to the semifinals with the classic overtime games against Texas Southern, and they have just flipped in terms of what they're able to do this year. Yeah, they really missed the guard. Yeah. And right now, if the tournament were to begin today, Doc, at the halfway point, you've got Prairie View and Southern as a first round matchup. Is that fair to Southern? <laughs> if you're Southern, because, you don't, because of those four fits that that that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. Because of those four fits, that's a, that's a first round matchup. You know, that's not that's not fair to Southern. Your, your reward for winning the conference is Prairie View. Right. Wow. And, and if you take those, assume uh, Prairie View uh, won those two games. You remember who they were supposed to play the, on those two forfeits, Doc? I don't remember. Off the well, they played the Southern and they played Grambling. So let's say, let's say they split. Say they, they split. Let's say they split. Those teams yeah. are playing well, but let's say somehow they split that. Yeah. Um, they, they would be at, obviously, flip five and four. The right. other one that's interesting, which is a home loss to Valley. Credit to Valley getting done in overtime, but Coach Smith, did not coach that game. He was also still out for COVID a couple of players. So I think if you really look at it realistically, you could easily see uh, this team at six and three, which gets back closer to your point, the talent that um, is there in a team that is well coached in terms of your first round game. You're playing a team that would be closer to four or five matchup. 
uh, than they are sitting at eight. So it'll be interesting to see the rest of the season um, what that looks like in terms of the teams finishing the regular season. Obviously, they split the divisions up in some of the rankings, but it's one full ranking when you look at actually the SWAC when you go to the website. They are just doing one single ranking. Yeah. Uh, uh, and when you uh, flip over to the uh... – to the BAC, despite Norfolk, uh, you know, setting setting the curve early, setting setting the bar high, a uh, little bit of a reality check. I, I guess they partied too uh, hard one night and forgot to study and did not get an A on, on, on one of your tests there, Doc. But is North Carolina Central beating Norfolk or beating anybody in upset? Nah, it, it, it's not. You know, this is Coach Mouton, uh coach team you expect them to compete they got they got the victory so question number one has already been answered no Norfolk we're not going and O on the season in the BAC will that be the only chink in the armor that's that's the question that needs to be uh answered and when we talk about these uh makeup games that have to happen in the in the BAC, it's a little bit easier in the BAC because of the cluster of teams that you have you got that northern cluster and then you've got that, that Southern cluster. So if you're already in the, uh, the Southern cluster playing your normal two games that you have on your schedule and you miss that third team because of a COVID incident, it's a little bit easier in the BAC to get that. It's the same thing, vice versa, when those teams travel to that uh, Northern area to try to get an extra game in than it is in some of the other conferences. So, uh you know, I think it. I think it will balance out. They will have opportunity to get at least twelve of those fourteen games in for those teams that they uh, that have lost uh, games. So, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. Good, good points. Great points there. Edwin says I think SWAC schools are doing a little better job to make sure they are able to compete and not forfeit games in terms of COVID. Great points. Um, they are seeming after maybe kind of started slow beginning of the seasons. They've been able to put it together rally the troop, keep everybody safe, uh, keep them outside of the COVID framework. So good point there, Edwin. Any final thoughts that you wanted to provide? Yeah, uh, Dr. Kavir, you know, it's uh, the start of Black History Month to, uh, is today. You know, despite all the ignorance that we've seen around our HBCUs over the last two days with these, uh, with, with the bomb threats, you know, just want everybody to keep in mind that Friday, is Rosa Parks' birthday. Everybody knows December 5th, the day when she sat down on the bus. Most people don't know February 4th, the day that she was born in, you ready for this, Doc? Tuskegee, Alabama. Wow. That's a good tie when you tie it in. I want to do another one that's a little off the record. We'll see if we can find a way to put the tie in. Obviously, everybody's heard by now. Flores, the former coach of the Miami Dolphins, has uh, filed a lawsuit, class action lawsuit, uh, against the NFL over racial hiring practices. People know that he had two winning seasons, including this last one, was not included in the playoffs, but he was dismissed. And so um, this is big news. The reason I tied in in terms of this, and, and I'm in seriousness of people committing, uh, I think you uh, are having been funny with this, but you see some of these uh, NFL former players uh, and then former coaches like Hugh Jackson coming into the SWAC and coaches. Um, obviously, I'd be a little bit long for that, but thought, think about him uh, getting blackballed if what we see the NFL has done in the past. Hopefully, he's able to prove his case and at least get his money in terms of that. But it would be intriguing in terms of that connection to feel that he had to go uh, to the point where he says, I'm tired of all this and bypasses even the power fives, which you would think he would get a strong look for we don't see many uh, of African Americans, blacks getting those opportunities. You don't get recycled, coach. Uh, right. Doctor Kabir, so they do. How far fetched is it to see that to somehow you see him landing at a SWAC, maybe even a MEAC school? Fascinating, um, ugly truth that's out there. A guy to find a way to do better in terms of NFL and in this country and this world. So I'll leave it right there. I want to say thank you for joining me uh, and doing what you do as always. Uh, thank you for listening to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Kabil, the Dean of HBCU Sports, coming from Inside the Lab in the College of HBCU Sports uh, with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop with our guests. Uh, in terms of Professor Drew, uh, the visiting professor, coming in and getting you 
Again, I want you to I want to say thank you for listening to the Inside the HBC <laughs> Sports Lab with Mike Washington Charles Bishop every Tuesday. We'll be back on Thursday. See if we can get the guys back in here on Thursday at six o'clock Central Standard Time. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest news in the lab. Hope you like it. Tell me, let me know if you want to get your hands on one of these. We might see if we can get you out there. Uh, this is a little classic how this was a gift that was given to me. Yeah, I was excited about that. With that being said, inside the HBC Sports Lab on Facebook, inside the HBC Sports Lab uh, is on YouTube and Facebook. Inside the HBC Sports Lab one is on Twitter. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. That's D R K E N Y A T T A C A V I L. Again, that's D R K E N Y A T T A C A V I L. Let me know what you think on the little miniature helmets. Yeah, it's nice. Inside the HBC, you can put this right in your office. Uh, and make sure you shout out and know, let people know who you support. With that being said, uh, we'll give it a go. Dream big. Continue to move forward. One other thing I did want to add is the ben, ben, Big Ben Cowboy HBC. You will be giving that award. Uh, we'll announce it live on the show. Because of COVID, we are not back to doing the banquets, but we look forward to when we can get that going again. But we'll uh, give you an update. Ben L. Cowell Senior HBCU Football Award. For those that don't recall or didn't know, uh, that is an award that's given to a player uh, that was born in the state of Texas or played high school football in the state of Texas that has a connection to HBCU. Um, and so if you're in the state of Texas and you play at the HBCU, uh, you're eligible if you're from outside of the state of Texas, but you play for HBCU in the state of Texas, you're eligible for that. So we'll see some of the guys that are finalists, and then we'll announce who is getting the award for 2021 fall football season. Um, so the HBCU, inside the HBCU Sports Lab, we'll get it to you. Thanks for listening. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Courts, AD. Inspector Big Baseball at the house for HBCU coming out on Monday. Lecture. Dismiss. We'll holler. Good one. Good one.